Hey everyone, Dan Saavedra here, and you are watching the second video of the 90 day YouTube sprint that I'm doing. And we're basically gonna dive into a new topic every single day during this 90 day sprint, because from our data, we've seen that YouTube has been a promising new experimental channel for us. And so we want to see if we can leverage that and get some better results in terms of our organic marketing efforts. And so today what we're gonna go over is how to reduce CAC, CAC, customer acquisition cost. It's a big focus nowadays because of the tough economic conditions for a lot of businesses. People are getting a little bit tighter around these financials and paying more attention to it. Obviously in the past three to four years, ever since COVID, money was cheap. And so a lot of people weren't being too aware of their actual numbers and the health of their business. And so we're gonna talk about a a pain point that's coming up a lot. People are talking a lot about reducing CAC, which is a really big topic, obviously, but we're going to keep this one relatively short here. So before I start, who am I? I'm the founder of this company, Merge Your Data. This is our website. Know the buying signals, avoid missing revenue target targets. Jeez, I can't even talk in this second video here. But that's not too much of a worry because obviously we'll be talking about all the stuff that we see with clients day to day. And so you'll just get all the information about the type of stuff that we we help with. Um, I've been working 12 years in data, so been around the block a little bit, not as much as a lot of people, but more than others. So I know some things, don't know a lot of things, and we're finding out how to do things as we go here. So um, who would care about reducing CAC? And this is companies with a measurable CAC. These, this is who this video is relevant for. If you can't measure your CAC or you don't care about it because you're too small, then this isn't relevant because you're not gonna get any takeaways from it. So as long as you have these numbers, then this video will be relevant to you. And why you should care is because of these three reasons. Uh, one, tough economic headwinds. People are experiencing some tighter conditions. There's been layoffs. Revenue targets have been missed and the sales cycle is taking longer and longer, so it makes profit more of a focus here. Uh, we have less funding, and so profit becomes a focus again because there's not going to be this endless source of cash injected into the, into the business, and so you have to be more focused on your, your basics, your fundamentals, and so we're being more profit-focused. And then shrinking budgets, which ties into the other parts of this, marketing teams, sales teams, are seeing shrinking budgets more so on the marketing side, I would say, but sales is also experiencing the same thing, whether that's because of layoffs due to performance, increasing targets for the existing staff that they have, whatever it might be, but they're becoming more profit focused. And so you can see that the common trend here is people are caring more and more about profit. So one of the fundamental financial metrics that you can look at, there are a ton, but Customer acquisition cost is one of them, especially when it comes to growing and acquiring new logos. Obviously, there are other financial metrics around retention and expansion that are critical as well, but this is purely on the acquisition side of things. And so if you've been facing any of these three situations, if you're focusing more on profit, okay, the fundamentals of business, then this will be relevant. If you can measure your CAC, then this will be relevant. So. Let's move on to the next thing here. And so now looking at this right here, we've already talked about this CAC equals customer acquisition cost, if you didn't know that already. And then this is the formula that I pulled from the Corporate Finance Institute, really simple, sales and marketing expense divided by number of new customers. And that sales and marketing expense should include literally all of your expenses associated with sales and marketing. That's what it costs to part of what it costs to acquire the customer. And so that means your headcount needs to be included in that. Otherwise, you're not getting a full picture here. If you're just looking at what you're spending on certain channels, you're not getting a full picture of what it truly costs to acquire a customer. And then it's divided by the number of new customers. So this is just the number of new logos that you are acquiring and doing business with. And so the whole point of this video is to see how we can reduce the customer acquisition cost because if it costs less to get a customer, and obviously we're doing better, but you all probably don't need to hear that. So how to reduce CAC. Now, this is the 
basic no-brainer way, obviously this is just math. You either increase the number of new customers, the denominator, or you increase, I'm sorry, you decrease the sales and marketing expenses, and that includes headcount. And so obviously if we have a smaller number up on top and a bigger number or the same number on bottom, then it's gonna reduce our cost. Pretty simple math. But that's not why we're making this video. We want to actually know how to reduce this quickly and we want to know how we can do it. So the easy answer, the simple answer is data. We all have data, we can use it in different ways, but specifically we're talking about signal analytics. And so signal analytics, just go on to the next card here, provide leverage with data. So basically signal analytics can show you which data points are most important to get better results. So instead of trying to understand all of these data points across the entire customer journey, everything that happened, trying to attribute literally every single action and how it might've led to a sale. Instead, we're just focusing on the very specific signals inside of all that noise that are going to lead to the best results. And there's a very good reason for that. In this next card, it's called the Pareto Principle. And so being in data a while, you'll see that not all cases, but in a lot of cases, there are certain distributions of data statistics, right? Proto principle is kind of like a, I don't know, I think it's a little bit of a pop culture type of way of explaining some types of distributions that you typically see, but it's an easy framework to remember. And it's that 80% of consequences come from 20% of causes. And from what we've seen with our data, working with customers is that this tends to filter down all the way. There's usually one or two things that we can pinpoint with data that are leading to the majority of the results. And so obviously, why wouldn't you want to spend your focuses on the little bit of effort that's leading to a lot of results rather than trying to get better at the other 80% that only leads to 20% of results. And if you've heard people talk about the Pareto principle before, you might've heard it in the context of clients and revenue or clients and how much of a pain in the butt they are. 20% uh, of your clients will cause 80% of your problems. And then there's an 80-20 rule of the 80-20 rule, which we won't get into, but you can basically narrow it down even more. And so you can take that 20% and then you can take the 20% of that 20% and still get 80% of the 80% result. And so if I do my math right there, that would be 4% for 64% of the results. So you can really narrow this down and you can keep hammering down. And so to illustrate this, this is like our average client dashboard when we look at things. Now it's not always the case, but a lot of times it's pretty close. When we break down by revenue for new logos, and then we break it down by channel, you'll see that the 80% of the revenue comes from two main channels. And so these are the channels that you can focus on, you can double down on, you can pull learnings from to understand what's going right. Now, obviously there's a lot of other things, part of this 80%, I'm sorry, this 20% that's leading to 80% of the results. So if you add up these, it's close to 80% of revenue, then you can see that it's only two out of seven of the channels. And obviously this would be a long, long tail of different channels, but that's besides the point. That's leading to outsized results. Those are your leverage points. Then you wanna see why it's working and see if you can reverse engineer it so that when you experiment with other channels or you want to add focus to another area, then you can try to replicate what has already worked. And so then if we drill down, this is typically what we see. We'll drill down into channel one here and then we'll look at the specific signals within the customer journey here, signal one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and you'll see signal one has an outsized percentage of revenue. And so then obviously this signal is one that we should be focusing in on. Why is that working? How can our sales team leverage these signals? How can we produce more of those signals either by moving people through a funnel a certain way or reaching out at a certain time in the customer journey to try to get them to take that action. And there's lots of downstream effects of that. If you're able to locate 
the signal that works, you're going to reduce customer acquisition costs because you can now reduce your expenses in other areas, whether it's making a smaller sales team or reducing your spend on channels that aren't working because they're signals that are out here. But this is how you reduce CAC and you can do it pretty quickly because you can do this breakdown and you can see that something like competitor paid ads or something like that, like your, your search ads on competitor terms are just not returning any business. They don't lead to anything. And so your sales team is wasting time with them. Marketing's wasting budget, uh, competing for those keywords. And that's something you can change within a week. You can change it probably faster if you really wanted to, but you talk about it, whatever. And then you'll end up seeing results almost immediately because you cut that spend. And so that if we scroll back up here, we're reducing that top expense. Now, number of new customers, if we wanted to increase that, we can also use the same graph. And like I said, push people through to try to have them act and provide a data point that would, in, that would match up with that signal. So there's multiple ways to attack this. That's a very simplified version. Obviously the actual analysis and the behavior gets a little bit more challenging and a little bit more detailed. It's not always able to be categorized into these broad generalizations. Okay, so let's finish up here. So how you do it. One, look at your data. Two, find the signals using the Pareto principle. Three, do that for each level of analysis. So just hit down the hierarchy. If you have data already uh, that you want to look at, then you look at it. See if there is that grouping of 20% of the efforts leading to 80% of the results. If you find that, drill into one of those breakdowns the 20%. So if you have, you know, two categories, two dimensions inside of that 20%, break down further and just keep going. And that's how you're going to hammer down on the signals that matter for you, the signals that you can then start playing with in order to decrease your customer acquisition costs, which leads to tons of other good things. Last but not least, next videos, we're going to go over what are signals. So we just kind of crashed into signals in general. And one of the topics that signals helps address. So we'll take a quick detour, talk about what signals are in terms of marketing and sales. There's other definitions of other signals. They've been around a long time. I'm not the first one to talk about this. Uh, we're not the first firm to do signal analytics. There's tools out there that capture signals. And we'll talk about those too in one of our videos, but we're going to address what signals are for marketing and sales next. And then we'll jump back into some of the problems and questions that signals anal signal analytics can address. Last but not least, subscribe on YouTube if you want to follow along. Uh, there's also a link in the description where you can submit your email and we'll be sending out an email each time we pro publish a video so that you can see which videos we are publishing and whether or not you want to watch them. I know that YouTube subscriptions kind of just get swallowed up into the void. So if you're really interested, then obviously subscribe there. Otherwise, I appreciate you guys stopping by. We're starting out broad here and we're going to get really specific at times. We're going to stay a lot on the strategy and financial side of things because that is generally who can make the changes and influence marketing and sales processes, marketing and sales results. Obviously, if you're a day-to-day -day individual contributor, you can still find some really good information in these videos. At least I think so. Um, just because you can apply these things and your boss will love you if you are helping the company perform. So we'll start broad and we'll get more specific. Thanks for watching this. This is only the second video where I'm just doing this live, um, just recording it pretty much straight through. I think I paused a couple times during this video, but we're not going back and recording. And so thanks for struggling along with me. Hopefully through this 90 day sprint, we'll get, we'll, I'll get better at presenting here. Um, once again, 30 day, 60 day, and 90 day, I'll be presenting results from this experiment that we're doing. So if you want to just watch those videos too, then those will probably be interesting to talk about. So thanks for stopping by. I'm Dan Saavedra from Merger Data, and I'll see you tomorrow.